what if you could automate your life and work, large parts of them with AI and coding, and as a result, 10x your ambition and human connections? What if you could do that with no prior coding experience at all? And what if that was actually a secret to having a fulfilling life, or at least part of it, maybe just a small part? Over the past two years, I've immersed myself in the world of AI, coding, and automation. And during that process, I've discovered a few interesting aspects about them, as well as a few practical techniques that you can start using today to get started on that process. That's what I'm going to get into today, but I wanted to first start with a quick question. What is AI anyway? And you might say, that's kind of a silly question. Everyone knows what it is at this point. That's true to some extent, but at the same time, I've discovered several interesting and important aspects of AI that most people haven't fully explored or utilized yet in order to be able to uh, fully automate many parts of their lives and work. That's what I'm going to get into today. We're going to go from the basic ones to more advanced ones, so please sit back and relax. The one I wanted to get out of the way as soon as possible is this one. You ask a question, you get an answer. That's nice, that's useful, but that's not what I'm here to discuss today. Everyone knows this one at this point, right? Instead, I'm here to discuss number one. It is a statistical data processing machine. What that means is that for a sufficiently advanced AI model, it is able to take a bunch of input data, no matter how structured or unstructured it might be, and then you can ask a question about it, and you get some sort of output. A good example of this is as I was preparing for this TEDx talk, I wanted to analyze some of the past popular videos and talks on TEDx. So I went to their YouTube channel, copy and pasted a bunch of their videos, their titles, their view counts, gave them to an advanced AI model, and asked which ones are the most popular ones. I was able to get that list from the past two weeks from that point, and I started to get some inspiration for my own talk that way. So you might say, OK, this type of analysis is nice, but at the same time, it's not always 100% accurate, and that's true. Keep in mind, though, that there are a few different ways to increase accuracy and verify results. For example, you can ask the model itself to double check its own results, kind of like self-reflection. You can ask a group of AI models, multiple models, the same question with the same data to compare results, kind of like asking a council of different models. Or you can ask for citation, like a good professor would ask a student. Number two is that it's a great translator. Obviously good for automating translation. And one way I found this useful is for learning a new language. The way I recommend it is I would first come up with an original sentence that you want to learn to say in your own language have AI translate it into the target language you are trying to learn, and then I would practice it as much as possible. I would practice pronouncing it, listening to it, maybe ask clarifying questions to understand it well. And once you're comfortable with that sentence, give that sentence to a group of native speakers to make sure it's correct on a platform that allows you to do that. Number three is that it's a great multimodal translator. What I mean by that is, for example, Let's say you have a lot of text you need to read for a class or you know, anything else, but you're too lazy to read it, you're too tired, or you're not able to read it for any other reason, then you can have AI read it out loud for you. Or if you have a bunch of data on your computer that's unstructured, unprocessed, you're not sure how to analyze it exactly, then one way to do that is record a screen video of yourself scro scrolling through everything pre pretty quickly and then have AI translate that video into text so it's easier to process. And finally, if you're ever tired of typing with your hands, one way to fix that is you can use your voice, speak into AI, and have AI transcribe everything into text so it's easier to put in data. Who here does that, by the way, using voice for typing? Not a lot of people yet, but I predict it's going to be a majority pretty soon. Number four is that it's a great writing assistant. You might say, OK, this is not a good idea to encourage it, especially on the TEDx stage, because there's so much AI slop out there. Don't encourage more of it. That's fair. I would say never replace important human connections with AI directly through writing or otherwise. 
but instead focus on automating the boring parts of the whole process. So when it comes to writing, let's say you're trying to write a blog post. Instead of having AI write the whole thing, you can automate typing. Like I said, you can speak instead of type, and you can automate the process of formatting. You know, after you speak all your thoughts and ideas into AI, you can have AI format all of that into a blog post format, LaTeX, a paper, whatever you need. And you can also automate the process of editing. You know, if you get 100 sentences from AI that way, you can say, I like this sentence, I like this sentence, I don't like this sentence for this particular reason. This other sentence needs to be fixed in this particular way and needs to be moved over here. And that way, you can go through everything pretty quickly. Uh, it's still all your thoughts and ideas. Number five is that it's a great coding assistant. Even before AI, coding was a good way to automate simple tasks, like simple image conversion, simple video editing, simple, manage simple file management, stuff like that. With AI, all of this process becomes much easier, simpler, faster, and more accessible, so that even if you're not a programmer, you now have the power of coding and automation. Number six is when you combine some of these aspects together, in my opinion, it becomes, and it can be, a lot more powerful. A good example of this is from my own life. I once combined the coding assistant aspect of AI with the statistical data processing machine aspect together to analyze this public website I was going to use. It was for a conference I was going to in Las Vegas. And essentially, I wanted to extract a list of potential partners that I could work with at this conference. I did exactly that. Again, from this public website, I found seven of uh, potential partners. I started to talk to them in person, one by one. And eventually, I was able to close a $10,000 deal with one of them. So AI does work when you use it right. And number seven is that it's a great way to automate the process of automation itself. Just to illustrate this point, about two years ago, I started to use ChatGPT and GPT-4 a lot, like a lot of people here have. And nowadays, I use other things too, like Google AI Studio and Gemini 2.5 Pro. But back then, that's what I was focused on. But I found myself getting frustrated because I was copying and pasting a lot between ChatGPT and my local drive, and my, you know, back from my code editor back to ChatGPT. Uh, so I decided to you know, see if there's a, a way to automate that whole process, you know, copy and pasting. I did exactly that with AI. I created a system that gave ChatGPT direct access to my local drive so that it was able to write files, write code, edit code, and run code directly on my computer. It was a little bit scary, but at the same time, it was pretty useful. You could say it was one of the earliest five coding tools as well. I even had it write an entire textbook for learning French so that I could learn a little bit of French on my way to France. Now, this stuff is really powerful, you know, this idea of automation of automation. But I should say, you don't have to build a system like that yourself nowadays. Um, you can if you want. It's not that complicated, as you can see right there. But nowadays, there are tools that allow you to take care of this process, like the ones I listed right here. So you can just pick one, get started, and see how that goes, whether you're a programmer or not. Now, all of these strategies that I mentioned here have worked really well for me. But at the same time, I started to ask myself, what am I supposed to do now with all this automation? And what do I actually care about? Well, I came to the conclusion that some of the things I care the most about are these three things in particular, among other things. And interestingly, the more I automated away boring parts of my life and work, the more time I got to spend on these things that I cared about and things I enjoyed doing. I want to close this talk by saying that you can do this too. I happen to be a little bit earlier than most other people, but at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. The most important thing to keep in mind is to focus on automating things that you, uh, that you find boring instead of things that you truly care about. And that way, I truly believe that you're going to have more time for things that you care about, whether it's spending time with people that you care about, perhaps even 10xing human connections, or revisiting dreams and ambitions that you used to have that you thought were too hard to do with AI, they might now be possible. So I would say take out a piece of paper and a pen, physical ones I recommend. If you don't have them, you might need to go to a store. But 
write down three things that you care the most about in your life, work, relationships, whatever that might be, and get started today. Thank you so much.